Good morning and welcome to the second of three videos on section 12.1 in your textbook, which is all about an introduction to limits. <clears throat> Let's jump right in here and start with example number four from your textbook, which says, <clears throat> estimate the limit as x approaches one of the quantity x cubed minus x squared plus x minus one, all divided by the quantity x minus one. <clears throat> now, right off the bat, you can see that if you simply tried to do this by direct substitution, you would end up with uh, x minus one in the denominator, which is uh, one minus one or zero. So that would give us an undefined term. So in order to actually uh, try to calculate this limit, uh, what we're going to have to do is uh, go through the table method that we did in uh, examples two and uh, three. So let's have a look at this um, here, shall we? Um, so obviously we're looking for the limit as x approaches one. So I'm going to put 1.0 right in the middle of the table right here. And of course that's going to give me an undefined term. Now, I'm going to decrease uh, 1 by 1 1,000th, 1 1,100th, one one and 1 tenth. And on the right side, I'll increase it by 1 1,000th, 1 one-hundredth, and 1 tenth, just to see what happens. <clears throat> now, get out your handy-dandy little magic number box and start to plug in uh, some of these numbers. All right? Let's start on the left with 0 0.9. So 0 0.9 cubed minus 0 0.9 squared plus 0 0.9 minus 1, all over 0 0.9 minus 1. And if you plug this into your calculator correctly, you're going to find that it gives you 1.8100. Okay. Do the same thing with uh, 0.99. Uh, so 0.99 cubed minus... Uh, 0.99 squared plus 0.99 minus 1 all over 0.99 minus uh, 1, and that's going to give you uh, 1.981, I'm sorry, 801. Try it again with uh, point, uh, 0 0.999, and that's going to give you 0.999 cubed minus 0.999 squared plus 0.999 minus 1, blah, blah, blah. And if you plug this into your calculator correctly, you'll get 1.9980. So before you even um, look at this even more carefully, uh, can you determine what value uh, the limit is approaching as x approaches 1 from the left-hand side. Well, if you look at these numbers, obviously we're getting closer and closer and closer to a value of 2. 1.998 is really close to 2. So my guess is that the limit is approaching 2. But to be sure of this, we also have to do the uh, values or calculate the values as we approach from the right-hand side. So we plug in 1.001 into our calculator uh, for this x stuff. And uh, so 1.001 cubed, blah, blah, blah. Uh, this gives us 2.0020. All right, there should be a decimal point right there, which again is really close to 2. So you can see we're getting closer and closer to 2 uh, as the values of x get closer and closer to 1. Uh, plug in 1.01 0, .01 and uh, the value of the limit, or f of x I should say, becomes 2.0201. Um, and if I plug in 1.1, 1 .1, uh, the value of f of x is 2.2100. Alright, so the moral of the story is that in this case, all right. As x gets closer and closer to 1, the value of f of x gets closer and closer to a value of uh, 2. All right. And so the limit in this case is 2. 
all right? Even though if you actually plug in the value of x equals uh, one for this, you end up with an undefined term, all right? So the limit is, appro is approaching two. As x approaches one, f of x approaches two. And so that's how we calculate these kinds of things. So um, here's the, the same example, um, just with the numbers written prettily uh, here. Um, and so even though the term here is really undefined, we can see that as we're going this way and this way, we're approaching a value of two for the limit. Okay, so this limit equals two. That's and that that is the final answer um, in this case. All right. Okay. As always, if you have questions about this this sort of stuff, or uh, even how to use your calculators, um, you know, make, send me an email, and we can uh, certainly try to work this out um, either via the email or. Um, through Zoom or whatever it happens to be, all right? Okay, so that is example number four. Let's look at example number five. Uh, this time, um, you're asked to find the limit of f of x as x approaches three, where f is defined as a constant function. f of x equals two anytime x does not equal three, and f of x equals zero anytime x equals three. Now, in this case, because there's no actual calculations involved here, it's probably easier to look at this in terms of a graph. And so if you graph this, this is simply going to turn out to be a constant function. Now, if you have uh, a TI-84 um, or TI-89, you can graph this right on your calculator. All right, if not, I suggest that you go to um, the website graphsketch.com All right, graphsketch.com and uh, plug in uh, this uh, this equation where y equals two, all right? And what you're gonna get is a, uh, a value that looks something like this, um, where uh, the, the value of the line is, um, notice, is constant, all right? Uh, the value of f of x is equal to two, all the way to the point x equals three. And then we've got this open circle here, at the value of x equals three, um, but then a point down here where um, x equals three. And so this is a, a discontinuity uh, in our function, all right? The, the function is simply f of x equals two, except at the value x equals three, all right? Um, but what's the limit here? Well, as the value of x approaches 3 from the left, the value of y approaches 2. As the value of as the value of x approaches um, 3 from the left, the value of y approaches 2. All right? So we're still converging on this point, even though at the value x equals 3, the function f of x is equal to zero, all right? And so uh, in this particular case, this limit does not exist, all right? Um, so no matter how close x gets to the value of, um, uh, I'm sorry, this limit does exist because we're approaching two from both sides, all right? We're approaching two from both sides. So the limit does exist. Now, for example number six, I'm going to ask you to show that the limit does not exist. All right. And in this case, again, I'm going to use a graph. 
And so I'm going to graph the function, the, uh, the absolute value of x over x. And I'm going to look at its behavior at, as x approaches 0 from both the left and the right. Okay, And so you're asked here to show that the limit does not exist. Uh, and the limit as x approaches 0 of the absolute value of x over x. Now, um, obviously, this is going to be, uh, give you a value of f of x equals either 1 or negative 1 depending upon what, uh, whether x is positive or negative. If x is positive, then the limit as x approaches 0 is going to equal 1. All right. And if x is negative, then um, f of x is going to equal negative 1. And so you can see here from the left, uh, the right hand side, we're approaching the, the value uh, y equals um, 1. So as x approaches 0, so we're getting smaller and smaller and smaller along our x axis, y approaches the value of 1. It's actually, it remains 1. It's constant. But from the left-hand side, as x gets bigger and bigger and bigger and approaches 0 from the negative side, all right, the value of y approaches negative 1. All right. In this case, it's important for you to note that because we are approaching two different values of y, that the limit does not exist. All right. The limit does not exist. All right. Sometimes this is abbreviated, by the way, as D N E. All right, D N E does not exist, <clears throat> and this is because um, the values of of y are not the same as x approaches from the left or the right. Okay. Example number seven um, shows. A, a different scenario. Um, here you're asked to describe the existence of the limit or discuss the existence of the limit. As uh, x approaches 0 of 1 over x squared. Now of course if x is equal to 0, 1 over x squared is an undefined term, right? Because 0 squared is 0. 1 over 0 is undefined. All right, but does the limit actually exist? All right, well, the answer here uh, is uh, that it, um, it does not. But why? All right, well, again, we're going to look at this graphically. All right, so get out your TI-84 or your TI-89 or go to graphsketch.com and actually graph this function, f of x equals 1 over x squared. And what you'll find when you do so is a graph that looks like this. Now, um, this is an interesting scenario, but what it uh, what it means is that as the value of x gets um, bigger and bigger and bigger from the uh, left-hand side, the value of y approaches infinity. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And as you as x gets smaller from the left hand side, um, the value of y gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So you might think off the top of your head, well, they're both approaching infinity, right? And so the limit exists. But in reality, that's not the case because infinity is not an actual number. It's not a term that you can. Uh, specifically write down as the answer to a, a question or a problem, all right? And so in, uh, in this particular case, the, uh, the limit, um, because it doesn't approach a specific real number as x approaches zero, the limit again does, whoops, the limit does not exist, all right? So this is another d n E. Okay. Example number eight. All right. 
Same kind of scenario in this particular case. You're asked to discuss the existence of the limit uh, as x approaches zero of the sign of the value of one over x. All right. Again, get out your, your calculator and graph this function. And you'll find that it gives you a sine curve, right? It's a, a, the sine function, right? Up and down and up and down and up and down. But as the value of x gets smaller and smaller and smaller as you approach zero from the left, uh, I'm sorry, from the right, and as the value of x gets bigger and bigger and bigger as you approach zero from the left, the value bounces up and down and up and down. <coughs> And so you're not actually approaching a single number. And because you don't approach the same term from the left side and the right side, again, in this particular case, the limit does not exist. All right. Um, and again, because you are not approaching the, um, the same value from either side, um, this is. Uh, a scenario where the limit does not exist in this case. All right, the limit does not exist. Okay, so essentially, unless you're approaching the same value of f of x from both sides, the limit is going to be uh, non-existent. All right, now at this point, um, it's probably valuable to spend a few minutes going through. Um, the various properties of limits. How do we um, how do we deal with limit notation and their uh, the functions here? And so um, that's what the next few minutes will uh, will talk about here. So basic limits right off the bat here. All right, um, we're going to start by saying uh, that B and C represent real numbers. Okay, and that the value of n is a positive integer, so one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. All right. Um, so the limit as x approaches c of b is simply b. In other words, the limit of any given number is itself. Right. the The limit as x approaches zero of two is two. The limit as x approaches uh, 12 of, uh, of 28 is 28, okay? <coughs> um, the, for the second one, the limit as x approaches c of x is simply c, right? If the value of x gets closer and closer to c, then x equals c, right? If the limit as x approaches c of x is c. Um, so uh, the limit as uh, x approaches um, 0 of 0 is 0. The limit as um, x approaches 12 of uh, x is 12. Okay. Uh, the same thing is true when you uh, take x and uh, Square it or cube it or so on. The limit as x approaches c of x to the nth power is simply c to the nth power. If x is approaching c, then x to the nth approaches c to the nth. Uh, and the same thing is true for square roots. All right, um, the value of um, uh, x as x approaches c of n times the square root of x equals n times the square root of c. For an even numbered uh, value of n, all right, as long as it's um, two or four or six or, or whatever, and uh, that c is a positive number, all right, it's got to be greater than zero, all right. So those are just general basic limit rules. <clears throat> now, interestingly enough, if you try to take multiple functions and combine them, all right, then uh, there are a variety of different things that you can do. The first aspect of this is addition. So the sum rule says that if the limit as x approaches c of f of x and the limit as x approaches c of g of x both exist, 
All right, so we know the limits exist. Then the limit as x approaches c of the sum of f of x and g of x is equal to this uh, limit as x approaches c of f of x plus the limit as x approaches c of g of x. All right, so think about that. Essentially, what we've done is we've taken the limit of the sum of these two things, and that equals the sum of the limit of these two things. Okay? The limit of the sum of these two functions is equal to the sum of the limits of these two functions. Okay? That, and that is referred to as the sum rule. The difference rule is almost exactly the same. Right? Think about this. All right, if the limit as x approaches c of f of x and the limit as x approaches c of g of x both exist, then the limit as x approaches c of the difference between f of x and g of x is equal to the difference between the limit of f of x and the limit of g of x. All right, so we're taking essentially what it says is that the limit of the difference between the two function is equal to the difference between the limit of each of the two functions, okay? The limit um, of the difference of the two functions is equal to the difference of the limit of each of the two functions, okay? Now, uh, next one, the product rule. All right, very similar. In this case, again, if the limit as x approaches c of f of x and the limit as x approaches c of g of x both exist, then the uh, limit as x approaches c of the product of these two functions is equal to the product of the limit as x approaches c of f of x and the limit as x, of, as x approaches c of g of x, all right? So the limit of the product is equal to the product of the limits, all right, if, you make, if that makes sense to you. Now, for division, we end up with a slightly different deal because there are more limitations on what we can do here, all right? First things first. Um, Oh, I'm sorry. Let, we're, we're, let's do the constant multiple rule first. Um, if the limit as x approaches c of g of x exists, then the limit of the constant k times g of x is equal to k times the limit as x approaches c of g of x. Now, Essentially, remember uh, that we said the limit as x approaches c of a constant b is equal to b, all right? And so this is really, this value k is really the limit as x approaches c of k, all right? That limit is k, all right? And so this is really no different than the, um, the product rule that we talked about a little while ago, all right? So the limit as x approaches c of a constant times g of x is equal to that constant times the limit as x approaches as x approaches c of g of x okay it's 12 o'clock thank you jesus the quotient rule uh, states that again if the limit as x approaches c of f of x and the limit as x approaches c of g of x both exist then <clears throat> the limit as x approaches c of the quotient f of x divided by g of x is equal to the limit as x approaches c of uh, f of x divided by the limit as x approaches c of g of x. Okay. So the limit of the quotient is equal to the quotient of the limits. Now, the exception to this whole thing is uh, you got to make sure that the value in the denominator is not zero. All right, so if the limit as x approaches c of g of x is equal to zero, then this all bets are off because you end up with an undefined term again. 
Okay. So that's the quotient rule. All right, the quotient rule. Now, uh, last but not least, we have what's called the power rule. If the limit as x approaches c of f of x exists, then the limit as x approaches c of f of x to the nth power is equal to the limit of x of uh, uh, the limit as x approaches c of f of x all to the nth power as long as n is a positive integer right uh, you're not taking a square a root or um, an inverse <clears throat> all right so the limit as x approaches c of f of x to the nth power is equal to the limit of as x approaches c of f of x all to the nth power all right and that's the power rule here okay so that my friends is going to be where i leave off with um, the second of these three videos um, we will begin with uh, some examples for the third and final of these videos and i hope you learned something